thank you so much for inviting me. It's a, it's a great pleasure. Eh? Bon dia, buenos dias, good morning to everybody. I was very, very happy to have been invited to join you to discuss um, on these very relevant issues. I was very happy till the moment I was say that I was going to be the one to break the ice. Then I started to get a little bit more nervous eh, um, because I was wondering what to say in a context that it's not the context I use to work in. No? I normally work with policymakers, politicians, academics. I work with business, I work with NGOs, but this thing of working with people that identify themselves by saying that they want to belong, they want to be part of something called sustainable brands, that was a little bit more challenging. So the first thing I'm going to, to do, because of this very nice invitation to do it, is to sit down. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to sit down and I'm going to tell you how I have imagined this uh, very short presentation. I thought, what do I have in common with these people in order to share some thoughts on what is the scene, the global scene? On sustainability. And then I realized that probably the thing we've got in common is that um, we are a sort of uh, club of fans of Pink Floyd. <laughs> I don't know if everybody in the room, because I've seen many young people, know Pink Floyd. <laughs> but uh, um, in the 80s, they used to sing a very known, well known song. They made a record, they made a movie called The Wall. And why I thought that we could be a sort of a club of fans of uh, Pink Floyd and um, what is the connection to this idea of The Wall. I realized that probably if you find yourself as people that want to be part of this sustainable brand's adventure, it's because you have discovered that you have to challenge the wall. We all are bricks in a wall built um, in our education system, in our system of values, in order to protect ourselves. We have uh, grown up in a context of prosperity, in a context of protection, and after a while, we discovered that the world may, has, may have shifted into something less protective and a little bit more oppressing. But we don't know how to and make the wall in order to build something bigger. Till the moment we remind that we are bricks in the wall, so we have the capacity to move the wall beyond the existing frontiers. This is what I found that could be the context where we could uh, work a little bit together. I guess that there are at least three different steps in this uh, I'm building the wall exercise. The first thing is to acknowledge the wall. The good points, the tricky points, and the reasons why it is important to challenge the wall. The second step is to find out, once we have known that we have to challenge that wall, how to do it, because it is not easy at all to, to make this wall. And the third thing is to enter into concrete action, to go beyond the wall, to build a new prosperity. I guess that um, for the time being, we are in somewhere between the first and the second step. We have acknowledged that the world has got its limitations, and we don't have many clues. And we fear, we still fear to live, to unmake the current world, to go beyond, because we are not sure to what extent we will be able to build a new prosperity. But we know we have to do it. What is the wall? What type of wall we are facing? Well, we are facing a context where we have benefited from a very powerful period of time where development, prosperity, well-being has been based on an absolutely unconscious understanding of an earth without limits. So we could use whatever. It was for our own benefit 
and uh, well, it has reasonably well work, uh, probably in historic times. It is the period of time where humankind has evolved and has benefited in longer and deeper in, uh, in a shorter period of time. But now we have discovered that uh, it was a price to be paid. We've got very relevant information about that. The question is not scientific knowledge. The question is how to build a gap between the knowledge and the action. What is the knowledge we've got? A couple of comments on that. First comment, probably to synthesize a large burst of information around these limits. Something that um, a group of scientists call the planetary boundaries. So to say, the Earth is a sort of a system, and if we go beyond certain thresholds, we could be facing systemic failures that could be very, very difficult to face. And this uh, group of uh, scientists working on these planetary boundaries underline that there are at least four fields where we are near these thresholds. Climate change, biodiversity losses, land use, and the cycles of nitrogenous and phosphorus. All of them key in order to ensure water, in order to ensure food security, in order to ensure access to energy. The other thing we know is that uh, because of physical, because of demographic reasons, the system cannot work as it has worked up to now for a very long time. We know that the trends are sound. We know that probably we are going towards 9 billion people in Earth. We know that all these people would like to enjoy some prosperity, some access to a reasonable, prosperous, well-being style of life, and that uh, the current model we have developed doesn't fit very well with this aspiration if everybody follows the same pattern we have followed up to now. And the second thing we all know is that if this is something that is going to happen because of physical, because of demographic reasons, it seems to be easier working together, act jointly, than doing each one whatever. A lot of free riders doing whatever. It could be less efficient, it could cause more problems, it could be more difficult. So the big question is not either this is going to happen or this is not going to happen. The big question is to what extent we prefer wait and see and react to whatever it happens, whenever it has already happened, or to do the other way wrong, to try to identify how we can build this transformation in a manner that uh, at least lowers the risk, tackles the vulnerabilities, the difficult aspects, and tries to get all the opportunities that this big transformation may bring us. This is a very interesting moment in time to do this exercise. Because if the question is whether we want to react or we want to drive the transformation, it may be a good year to do it. Because of many strange reasons, this is the year when governments have decided to at least try to agree on how to do this together. The UN official agenda has set three big appointments for governments to tackle the future in a different manner. The first of these big appointments will take place in July in Addis Ababa where governments should be thinking on how to finance development otherwise. The second big event could be in New York in September, where governments are supposed to adopt a new agenda on sustainable development goals, 16 sustainable development goals, lots of uh, uh, targets 
below these goals, and lots of indicators to know to what extent we are doing, doing things properly or not, we are on track or not. And the final agenda uh, appointment is uh, Paris in December 2015, where the governments are supposed to set this scene to tackle climate change otherwise in a global effort to some the action instead of competing for what it is needed to happen. In order to, to bring this uh, positive envy, this pride of doing more instead of uh, the current mood that drives us to, to, to be acceptable on what would we do com by comparison to what others do. These are the three big settings um, for these 2015 years, 2015 years. Yes. And the question is, is it enough that the governments do the role? It's up to the governments to do, and the rest of the people wait and see? Well, this is a tricky question in this room, because I guess that many of you could tend to think the other way wrong, to say, no, we cannot believe on that, we cannot think, and we cannot expect that governments are going to do their job. They seem to be too lazy, too difficult, too bureaucratic, too short-term to do this. And we should be confident on our own. My answer could not be that way. My answer could be that each one has a different role to play. And we should be demanding each one to play its own role. We cannot say governments are useless. Of course they are useful, and they should be accountable for what they do and for what they don't do. And they are the ones that are in a position to do the best, to build much more consistent, coherent action, to be much more efficient, and to show that the signal should encompass what we need to happen, instead of having doubts or competing for doing less than the others. We need to build the confidence on our capacities to play, to act together. And for that, we need to get into this new mentality where we abandon a sort of pilot case, lots of small things happening, and we bring coherence to build a new normality, this new world beyond the current world. But as I said, my answer could not be Yes, the governments and that's all. The world is much more complex than that. We need everybody doing its own role. Business have its own role to play too. It's up to all of you, each one among you, to wonder to what extent these physical limitations of natural resources these changes we are already facing, good impact in your own business strategy, in your own business model, in the type of uh, expectations your consumers will be bringing with them, and so to say, in order to wonder how you have to think and act otherwise, and to what extent you can demand others to be with you or to try to help you to act jointly, to work together. It is the same for consumers. I guess that the most powerful people in the world is the whole world, so consumers and voters, deciding what they want to, to demand um, to those uh, building, to those producing products, and to those uh, um, building the, the public governance. But it is not so easy to, to, to live the traditional way uh, because of this educational world uh, and to think otherwise. Sometimes it takes some time. However, even if taking some time, the trend is also very sound, visible, and credible. You all know that um, between 15 and 25% percent of the share of uh, total consumers in mature markets do already care about social and environmental impacts of what they buy. So, this is already a very powerful signal. We have been witnessing 
and this will be something that will be increasing in the coming months, in the coming years, and it can be a sort of uh, black swan one of these days, <coughs> that um, there are some powerful trends uh, causing very interesting changes in the big money. Some of you know about this, this um, divestment strategies campaigns, asking pension funds, asking institutional funds to ask where the money is being invested and to start thinking on risk and opportunities otherwise. We need to assess things, uh, uh, risk and opportunities otherwise. And we need to spread this as the normal way to take decisions for policy, decisions for private investments, and um, you've got an opportunity to, to think about that for your own concrete business. And then I come back to, to the, um, the issue of the brand, the, the type of uh, concerns that uh, some of you may be, may be uh, identifying as your main concern, this, this question of marketing. And I'm going to, um, to come to this point by uh, telling you a little bit why I am here. I, um, this, this, uh, happened, this started a couple of years ago, probably. I was uh, talking in a very serious event on a very serious insurance company on, very precisely, assessing risk otherwise, climate and carbon risk for an insurance company that understands that they need to change and transfer the risk where it has to be taken and not covering unknown risk and realizing that the risks were much more unknown than what they expected. And at the end, Jose came to me and, tell, and, and introduced himself saying, I'm coming, uh, I'm representing a company that it's called Quiero Salvar el Mundo Haciendo Marketing. So you know all of that. All of you know what it means in English, but it's quite a shocking thing for something uh, as the place we were in. No? It, it took me 30 seconds to think if he was serious, he was pulling my leg. Quiero salvar el mundo haciendo marketing. I thought of many things. I even thought about uh, this question of uh, greenwashing. You know much about greenwashing too. That's a sort of criticism, people saying, okay, what all these people are doing? Are they really doing something or they are just painting the bricks in green? And I realized that it, he was serious. It was not that, uh, that he was just trying to paint in green whatever uh, brick he had in front of him. And I thought that it was a very powerful expression because You've got the power to create, as Kohan was saying, a, a notion of value, a notion of worth. You have a very powerful weapon to get some influence and to make things happening much faster. Of course, I don't know anything about marketing, but I've been in politics for a while. And you need to stay Trustful, credible, sound, honest, and real things need to be there in order to keep your brands in the market. So I hope uh, um, you got a great opportunity these days to develop this agenda in uh, many different trends, in many different streams of work, and uh, good luck, and of course count on this joint mentality in order to change the world. Thank you.